Welcome to lecture 6.2, computing Fourier series. So in the previous lecture, I showed you what Fourier series are. Um, given a 2 pi periodic function, that's piecewise continuous, we can decompose that into a sum of sine and cosine waves. Think of this like a sound wave. And there, there might be a constant term. This is like cosine and zero term. And this is just a vertical shift. And I showed you how to do that. So I gave you formulas for the ANs and for the BNs. And we showed how that arose from defining a generalized dot product on the space of all of these functions. So in this lecture, we're going to actually take two functions and we're going to compute these things explicitly. So the first one is the square wave, or this particular square wave. Let me sketch it. So, so this is the function that looks like this. And this is pi. This is 2 pi. So it has period, it has period 2 pi, and it's this repeating square wave. So find the Fourier series. So we have our, our formulas. Um, so the first thing to do is compute a naught. So that, that is the, uh, let me actually remind you what the formula is. I'll put it up, up here. So it's, it's a n is 1 over pi times negative pi to pi of f of x um, cosine of n x dx. And then the b n is the same thing. It's just this is a sine instead of a cosine. So th remember, this, this works for n equals 0 as well. But we have to do this one separately because um, integrating a function times cosine is not going to be the same as integrating it as function times 1. So a, so a naught is 1 over pi, negative pi to pi, times the function f of x times 1 dx. So this function is piecewise continuous. So we, so we have to, oh, let me draw the function on, on this part as well. So we have to break this into two parts. So the first part is the integral from, from uh, negative pi to 0. So that's negative pi to 0 times f of x. By the way, what is f of x on this region? It's negative 1. So negative 1 dx plus 1 over pi times the integral from 0 to pi. Now we've got to do this piece. And that's just going to be positive 1 dx. Because again, our function is negative 1 here, and it's positive 1 here, which is there. OK, so um, it's easy to see that, that, these, uh, that these integrals are, are going to cancel out, and we're going to get 0. So a0 is equal to 0. OK, so what, what's an? An is the integral from 1 over pi from negative pi to pi of f of x cosine of nx dx. OK, so we also have to break this into two parts because we have a discontinuity. So the first part is 1 over pi times negative pi to 0 of negative 1 times cosine of nx. Uh, let's make that nx a little better. Cosine of nx dx. And then the second part is on this integral, 0 to pi. So it's 1 over pi, integral 0 to pi, times positive 1 times cosine of nx dx. OK, so what are these integrals? It, now, it's really easy to, to make mistakes on signs, s-i-g-n's here. So let, let's be careful. So the, so the integral of negative cosine is um, negative sine. So 1 over pi. I had to think about that one. Make sure I had the S-I-G-N right. So it's negative sine of Nx. But I, should, I need to divide by N as well. So we evaluate that from 0 to pi. And then the integral of this thing, sorry, not 0 to pi. That's not right. Um, 0 up here, negative pi down there. And then the next one is the integral of 1 over n pi. Oh, I, I left out my negative sign. I think I said it, but I didn't write it. And then the integral of this thing is, is sine. So 1 over n pi times sine. 
of nx from 0 to pi. And now it doesn't really matter if we left out the negative sign. Plugging in 0 or pi, any of these things into sine of nx is going to give you 0. So both of these are equal to 0, and the sum is equal to 0. So an is equal to 0. Okay, now, now bn. bn is 1 over pi times negative pi pi of f of x times sine of nx dx. So again, we've got to break this into two parts because we have this discontinuity. So the first part is 1 over pi from negative pi to 0 of negative 1 times sine of nx. Again, the negative 1 comes because our function is negative 1 on this region, on this interval. Make that an x. And then, oh, dx, plus 1 over pi, 0 to pi, um, positive 1 times sine of nx dx. So this, so this first integral is going to be 1 over n pi cosine of nx. And let's see, do I need a, I, I might need a negative sign here. So let's, let's see, um, the, the derivative of cosine is, no I don't, is negative sign, so that's correct. But I'll need a, for the next one I need a negative sign, so this is, this is going to be plus, so plus negative 1 over n pi. Oh, I messed up my limits again, um, didn't I? This, yeah, this thing here should be 0, not pi, just habit. Um, okay, so this one goes, actually, let's first just write out its, its cosine of nx from 0 to pi. Okay, now let's, let's plug these things in. <clears throat> so, so let's be careful here. This first one is 1 over n pi times cosine of 0 which is just, which is 1, right? So, and then, so 1 minus cosine of, of n pi. Well, technically, I should say cosine of negative n pi. But remember, cosine of negative x is cosine of x, so we can make that positive if we want to. And now, let's, uh, let's, let's do this one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this minus. So I'm, I'm going to put the negative sign here and the plus sign here just to make things easier. So um, though I am going to put a 1 over n pi outside. And now we have cosine of pi n pi. minus cosine of 0, so which is just 1. Okay, so let's not leave our answer like this. Let's simplify a little bit. So first of all, what is, what is cosine of, of, of n pi? Let's, let's go up to the unit circle up here. Here's the unit circle. So here, here's 0 pi, here's 1 pi, here's 2 pi, here's 3 pi, and so forth. So notice this will be very helpful. Sine of n pi equals 0 for, for all n. Cosine, on the other hand, cosine of n pi is either going to be plus 1 or minus 1, depending on whether we have an even number of pi's or an odd number of pi's. So the best way to write that is negative 1 to the n. So these things will be super useful. Remember them. Be able to derive them if you forget them. So now I can, I can make both of these things just negative 1 to the n. So both of these things um, are just negative 1 to the n. And so now we can simplify this as, so this is, I'm just going to write this thing, and we have minus the negative of this thing because we swapped the order. 
So in other words, this is just 2 over n pi times 1 minus negative 1 to the n. And if you prefer, you can write this as it's 4 over n pi. That's n pi when um, n is odd. Because when n is odd, this becomes 1 minus negative 1. And it's 0 when n is even. So let, let me just conclude by, well, we are done. I've, I've found the, find the Fourier series. That just means find the ANs and the BNs, and we've done that. But let me say a few words about what, what this means. So, so this means that, let me box this first. So this means that f of x, um, f of x, can be written as a sum of sine and cosine waves. All of the cosine waves are zero because the ANs are zero. So I'm just going to write it as an infinite sum of sine waves, n equals 1 to infinity, of 2 over n pi times 1 minus negative 1 to the n times sine of n x. This function is a square wave. And this function, let me write it out a, a, a different way. Write out what this function is term by term using these terms. So, so that means that this function is, is a sum of sine waves where all of the ends are even. So this is going to be, this is 4 over pi sine of x plus 4 over 3 pi sine of 3x plus 4 over 5 pi sine of 5x plus 4 over 7 pi sine of 7x. It's just infinite series. This series converges to this square wave. And that's a remarkable fact. So again, you don't have to write it like this, you don't have to write it like this, but I think it helps to see different ways we can write this and why these things are the same. And let me say one more thing. If you were to plug this thing in, um, well, okay, well, so what, what happens if you plug zero into this? What do you get? You get zero plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero, which is the, this point right here. Oh, shucks, that, that's not what our function was defined. f of x was not equal to zero. So technically, when you have a discontinuity like this, and you compute the Fourier series, and you get something like this, you don't technically have the actual exact function that you started with. You have something very close. What you have is you have the same function, but at the discontinuities, it is actually the average value of, of the left endpoint and the right endpoint. So th this is a detail that, that I don't want to go over, I don't want to spend time on, I don't want to prove. But I think it's worth mentioning that the function you actually get back is technically not the thing you started with, but it's pretty darn close. And you can see why it's not going to be the thing you started with, because if I had changed this less than to less than or equal to and made that less than, well, then I wouldn't have, uh, none of this would have changed. I have a different function and I would have gotten the same answer. So if, again, what you get at the end of the day is Almost, this sum of sine waves is, is a square wave where it is defined in any discontinuity to be the average of the left and the, and the right endpoint. Okay, so this is the next and last example that we'll do in this lecture. So find the Fourier series of the following 2 pi periodic function. So it's, it's defined on, on 0 to pi, or sorry, a negative pi to pi, so this is negative pi pi. It's defined as this, and then we make that periodic. So it's, it's this function here, and if you want to, you can draw these vertical things, though they aren't, they aren't really there. Okay, so um, one thing I want you to notice is, in the previous example, 
Um, if I draw that smaller, in the previous example we had this square wave. Um, all of the terms we got were, were sines. We didn't use cosines at all. And um, I claim that we're going to get the same thing here. And what I want you to notice is these functions, or this function here especially, looks more like a sine wave than a cosine wave. This thing here is like a, a square version of a sine wave. I mean, do you see that? It's like it's, it's not a sine wave, but it's like a, a square version of it. It has the same symmetry as a sine wave. If you reflect this piece across both axes, you get this piece. Similarly, this has that same property. This is, it's not a square wave, but it's like, eh, it's, it's, it's not a sine wave, but it's, it's like a triangle version of a sine wave. So not surprisingly, at the end of the day, what we expect is this function is going to involve only sine waves and not cosine waves. And, we, and that symmetry argument is going to be the focus of the next lecture. But for now, let's just compute this. So, so we have that uh, f of x is a naught over 2 plus n equals 1 to infinity. Let me just write out what, what the uh, Fourier series is. Make that more of a b. And so this is f, and we need to figure out what the a n's and the b n's are. So um, a naught, that's the first thing to do. Oh, and, and I should say that the formula, just so you have it, is 1 over pi times negative pi pi of f of x cosine of nx dx. And the bn's are similar, just with sines. Okay, so a naught is 1 over pi times the integral of f. Oh, f, let's just write what f of x is. We don't have a discount, well, we have a discontinuity here, but we don't have it on this interval. So we, we don't need to break this into two parts. Let, let's write this as x times cosine of nx dx. Not, I'm sorry, x just, this is a naught we're doing, so x times, times 1 times dx. So there we go. Um, that's the area under the curve from negative pi to pi, right? That's, that's what this is. And so that's going to be 0. So just the area under under the curve. Oh, let's area, write that nicer. Area under the curve. OK, so a n is 0, or a, a naught is 0, a n is going to be 1 over pi, negative pi to pi, times um, x, this is f of x, times cosine of nx dx. So this is an integration by parts thing. So let's do u equals x, du equals dx, dv equals cosine of nx dx, and v equals 1 over n sine of nx. And I always have to think, I always do the cosine of sine and then check the sine s-i-g-n. Um, and yes, that is correct. Okay, so um, let's, let's write this out. So th this is 1 over pi. Now, now u times v is going to be... Um, x over n sine of n x from negative pi to pi. Remember, sine of n, that's something I'm going to write over here, sine of n x equals, not sine of n x, sine of n pi, sine of n pi equals 0, always, and the cosine of n pi equals negative 1 to the n. So when we plug in pi into here, we're going to get 0. So we can just ignore that. And then, so this is minus v, v du. So minus 1 over n sine of nx. Oh, I forgot my, my integral. So minus v du um, dx. 
from negative pi to pi. So this, this is also going to be zero. You can check that, or you could just, any sine wave. Um, so sine of nx um, from negative pi to pi cycles an integer number of times. So we're just computing the area under the curve of, of, a, of a sine wave, of, of n periods of a sine wave, and that's going to be zero. So that is zero as well. If you want to check, you're welcome to, but that's definitely a zero. Okay, so our ans are zero. So bn, let's do this. So bn is 1 over pi times negative pi to pi times x sine of nx dx. So integration by parts again. This is u equals x, du equals dx, dv equals sine of nx dx and v equals 1 over n cosine of nx and here I'm going to need a negative sign. Okay, so plugging this back in, this is u times v, so u times v is this negative x over n cosine of nx well, I should actually put a negative, I should put a 1 over pi out in front, All right? So is, is that correct? Yeah, that, that looks correct. So negative pi to pi, let's evaluate that. But then we also have minus v du, and so this is v du, so minus negative is going to be plus 1 over n times uh, negative pi pi cosine of nx dx. Okay, so, so similar argument up here. This is um, a cosine wave, a cosine of nx, the area under the curve. So that's going to be n, this thing is going to cycle n times from negative pi to pi, and the area under the curve is going to be zero. Um, so th this is going to be zero. Um, this first one here, let's, let's see, this is 1 over pi. So let's, let's plug in in pi. So let's plug pi into here. So 1 over pi times, actually I'm going to put the negative sign out there. That's going to make, I'm just going to make things easier. Make sure we, we have a fewer or less chance of making a mistake. So, um, in other words, I'm going to put, make that positive and put that out there. So now we have pi over n cosine of n pi minus pi. Oh, minus negative pi over n. Good, otherwise that, so we, things would cancel. Pi over n, not x, n. Cosine of n negative pi, which is just n pi. And, oh yeah, let me, let me, let me say that. Um, if you're not satisfied with why I just made this zero, Let's just check. This is going to be um, plus 1 over n squared sine of nx from negative pi to pi, and hopefully you're satisfied that this term is going to be 0 because, remember, sine of negative, or sine of n pi and sine of negative n pi, those are going to be 0. So that, that goes to 0. So anyways, let's, let's simplify. We have here... So we have a minus negative, that's going to make it a plus positive. So this is, we also have this pi canceling with that pi. So we have negative 2 over n times cosine of n pi, which is negative 2. 2 over n times negative 1 to the n.
and this is is if n is even it's negative 2 over n if n is even and if n is odd it's 2 over n now that's looks too much like a pi it's 2 over n if n is odd. So we have found the Fourier coefficients of this function. And as predicted, the cosine terms are all going to be 0, and the sine terms are going to be non-zero. So let's, let's actually write this out. So, th so that means, oh, let's do that with a pen now. So what this means is, is f of x equals this infinite sum n equals 1 to infinity of negative 2 over n times negative 1 to the n sine of nx. So if you, if you don't like the nice complicated close formulas like that, let's just write out a few terms. So this is 2 sine of 1x minus 2 over 2 sine of 2x plus 2 thirds sine of 3x um, minus 2 over 4 sine of 4x plus 2 over 5 sine of 5x and then we have this plus minus business or, um, plus minus dot 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 this function this function is, is this sawtooth wave. Well, it's almost a sawtooth wave. It's the sawtooth wave where at these breakpoints, it takes the value of, of 0, the average of pi and negative pi. Because notice, if you plug in 0 into here, you're going to get, if you plug in pi into here, you're going to get 0. And that is, that's, that's this point right here.